Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at my 2010 Apple wish list. This isn't a list of rumors, and this isn't a list of things that I think Apple will do. This is a list of things that I hope Apple will do. Basically, what I would do in 2010 if I was running Apple. So let's start by looking at Apple hardware. Now, the MacBook Pros have the same Core 2 Duos, basically, that they've had for years. I've got an old MacBook Pro that I really haven't seen fit to upgrade because the new ones basically have the same insides, just some minor improvements. I would really like to see in 2010 a new processor in the MacBook Pro. And sure enough, there are some rumors out there that the Arendelle processors from Intel will make an appearance in MacBook Pros later this year. Also, Apple needs to take a look at the MacBook Air. If you compare the 13-inch MacBook Pro to the MacBook Air, the only advantage of the Air is it's lighter. The 13-inch MacBook Pro, on the other hand, is much more powerful and cheaper. So maybe Apple needs to come out with a very lightweight version of the 13-inch MacBook Pro, one that's simply missing the optical drive and maybe has a solid-state hard drive in it, and they could replace the MacBook Air with MacBook Air version 2 for a lower price. In addition to that, I think the Mac Pro also needs new processors on the inside. Now the large 27-inch iMac with the i5 and i7 processors kind of rival the Mac Pros, and I would like to see the Mac Pros leap ahead with some really powerful new processors inside. One of the biggest items on my wish list is for changes to Mobile Me. I like to see changes on both ends. I like to see more features in MobileMe for the same price. Maybe some social networking features. Why not connect all these MobileMe accounts and allow us to communicate with each other? Add some Facebook-like aspect to it. And on the other end, I'd like to see them replace the 30-day trial version of MobileMe with a free version that all Mac users get and can keep, maybe with very restricted bandwidth. If other companies can offer free versions of their web services, I don't see why MobileMe can't as well. So there could be a MobileMe that every Mac user gets and a MobileMe Pro that you can upgrade to and other non-Mac users can get as well. In iTunes, I would love to see them add a subscription service, something where you can pay a monthly fee and basically listen through the network to any song in iTunes. This would match it with a lot of other services out there. It's probably not something I would use, but I think it's something that could be really big and a nice addition to iTunes. I love Apple TV and I use it quite a bit, but the one thing missing from it is access to all of the free video out there. I'm talking about the stuff that the networks put on their websites and on services like Hulu.com. There's really no reason why that content can't be on Apple TV as well, and I think Apple should work to convince the networks that it should do so. So on to the iPhone. Well, I don't even have any wishes for the iPhone hardware. I love the iPhone 3GS, and I think it's a much better phone than the network is. I'd like to see the network improved instead. So first of all, I'd like to see AT&T improve its network greatly and have us get good connections without dropped calls and good internet service everywhere. But in addition to that, I'd like to see it spread to other networks, of course. I'd like to see it on Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile, basically anywhere. And I'd like one of them to offer us a pay-as-you-go option. The other side of the iPhone is the App Store, and I'd like to see more transparency for developers. A lot of developers complaining that they don't know what's going to happen when they submit their app to Apple. It's kind of a black box, and they have no idea when or if their app's going to get approved, and there's a lot of ones being turned down for all sorts of weird reasons. So I want to see more transparency, maybe even complete transparency in the App Store approval process. Of course, I don't want to leave out the iPod Touch. The iPod Touch definitely needs an upgrade in 2010. It needs an upgrade with a camera. Now, wouldn't it be cool if it actually leapfrogged the iPhone and had, say, a 5 or even 7 megapixel camera in the iPhone, maybe with a decent lens? So that's it. Well, one more thing. There's the tablet. The tablet that, of course, according to Apple, doesn't exist, but we all know is coming soon. So what do I want for the tablet? Well, what I really want is for it to be a Mac a real Mac capable of running Mac software. But I know that's not going to happen. I know it's probably going to run a version of the iPhone iPod Touch operating system. So it's going to be kind of like that. So given those restrictions, what do I want? Well, I'd really like to, for it to be more than a media player. I don't want it just to playback media. I want to be able to create things. I want to be able to write on it. I want to be able to draw on it. I want to be able to make things on it and alter things on it. Also for the tablet, I really want it to have a low price. I want this to be something that everybody can get. So the idea of it being priced around $800 really bothers me. As a matter of fact, I hope it's more like the iPod Touch, more like two or $300. 
That's wishful thinking. Probably the answer is somewhere in between. But another thing is I want to make sure it's not tied to a service. There have been some rumors that will be tied to a 3D service and you'll have to go and get a subscription like you do with the iPhone. I'd like this thing to have maybe access to 3G networks if you want to pay for it, but I want it to primarily work over Wi-Fi networks like the iPod Touch does. So you can basically buy the device, go home and use it. You don't have to pay anything per month. So that's what I hope Apple does in 2010. What's your wish list? Leave a comment at this post at MacMost.com. Also, check out the other podcast at MacMost.com, the Mac Answers Podcast. It's a daily tips podcast based on the questions you ask at the MacMost forum. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now. <music>